Good morning. I'm Pastor Sean, and this is your morning prayer for Thursday, August 10th. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, exciting day. We've got Jonah chapters 1 through 4. And uh, if you don't know me, then then you wouldn't know that um, I'm all over Jonah. Um, and when I was taking Hebrew at the seminary, um, we basically used the book of Jonah to learn Hebrew. And so uh, we went through that book every which way. Um, in fact, my Hebrew instructor was... Um, was the author of the just released Jonah commentary. <laughs> so um, I know plenty about Jonah. Jonah is a fantastic uh, book, um, very brief, just four chapters. And I think the reading um, that I, I did is six minutes long. Get through it real quick. But it's, it's great because, um, you know, if, if you haven't read Jonah before, um, you're in for a treat uh, because it's, you know, usually when it, whenever anybody thinks about Jonah, you know, what, what's it about? Well, it's about Jonah being swallowed by the fish. You know, he, he tried to run away from God and the fish swallowed him and, and then he listened. It's like, yeah, that's in the story, but that's not the, the full story. That's, that's really not even the point. Um, because what we, we see is, is Jonah is, is a prophet and he's given, um, given a, a, an assignment to go outside of the people of God, to go to Nineveh, um, so go to a, a pagan nation, essentially, to call out against it, um, and he runs away from it. He, he doesn't want to do it. He runs away. Um, you know, he gets on a ship. ship go, gets caught in a storm. He gets tossed overboard. Fish swallows him. Spits him out. He goes to Nineveh and finally does his job. And then all of Nineveh repents, from the king all the way down to the peasants. They all repent. They all turn to, to God. And... Um, it's like, okay, great. Well, hey, mission accomplished. There you go. Go Jonah. But the the real meat of the story doesn't come until chapter four when we find that Jonah is very upset about this whole thing. In fact, he's angry with God because, and here's where we, the, the twist of the story is that uh, Jonah knew that God was merciful. He knew that if he went to Nineveh and called them to repentance, they would repent and God would forgive them, that God would not judge them and bring disaster upon them. And that's what makes Jonah angry, is he didn't want to go, not because he was afraid of going, but because he was afraid that God would actually be merciful, and he wanted God to judge the Ninevites. So it's it's a great... Um, it's a great example of, of you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great story. I mean, four brief chapters, but there's such a, a turn there. Um, but there's also so many interesting little facets of the text. And, and I would encourage you to, um, as you're reading this today, you know, and, and listen to it, absolutely. But, but if you are just listening to it, I would encourage you to go back and read it and, and do so slowly and really take um, notice of a lot of stuff that's going on there. Because like chapter one is, is remarkable in that... Um, you know, the, the word of, of God comes to Jonah and he says, go up, arise and go up to Nineveh and, and call out against them. So God says, get up and go that way. <laughs> and Jonah goes down that way in the complete opposite direction. Instead of going to Nineveh, he goes to Joppa to get a, on a boat. And so he, you know, God says, get up and go over here. And to the north, really, north um, would be the northeast, I guess, from from where Israel is. Um, instead, he goes down to Joppa. Then he goes down into the boat. Then he lies down at the very bottom of the boat. And so where, where God has told him to go up, we see Jonah is going down, 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 trying to get as far away from God as he possibly can. Um, then we have, you know, the ship is tossed and turning or tossed and tossed and, and, and it's just threatening to, to break up in the storm. The, the sailors are all freaking out and they find out Jonah is the reason for it. Um, and he says, throw me overboard. You know, it's kind of like, he's like, yeah, go ahead, drown me. I'd rather drown than go to Nineveh. Um, but the sailors don't, they, they want to preserve his life and they, they try really hard to, um, to preserve his life, but finally they say, okay, you know what? 
they they throw him overboard and then they turn to God and and they they essentially they they start worshiping God. Um, so the 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 sailors on the boat become more faithful in a sense than Jonah. So then Jonah goes into the sea and the whale. Well, I'm so, ooh, bad. My bad. It's not a whale. Um, everyone always says it's a whale. It's a fish. It's actually pointedly in the text. It says a fish. Um, I, I always hear the argument about the whale. Like, well, it, it could be a whale because you know, a fish isn't big enough to swallow him. And, and a whale, you know, they've got, you know, in their mouths, he could have lived in that. It's like, no, he couldn't. <laughs> a, a whale does not change, uh, make this any less miraculous um, or, or make it any more feasible. Um, rather, um, the miracle is that God appointed a fish to do this and kept him alive in this fish. So the fish swallows Jonah and he goes down into the depths. He's descending more and more and more. And in chapter two, we get this great prayer from Jonah. And it sounds like a pious prayer. It sounds like he's turned a, a new page. And he's like, okay, I'll, I'll listen to you, God. I'll follow you. But go back into there, into that prayer in chapter two and count up all the times he says I or me. And you'll notice that this prayer, while it sounds good, it is very Jonah-centric. Um, and so we, we see that, you know, maybe he hasn't quite come around all the way. So chapter 3, he goes to Nineveh, does a bare minimum of what is asked of him, and then instantly, repentance. The king calls for a fa a fasting and sackcloth for everybody. Even the cows get in on the action. <laughs> Even the cows are draped with sackcloth. Everybody repents, and God relents. He relents of the disaster he was going to bring upon them, okay? Um, he has mercy. He is gracious, and, and oh, it's awesome. And then chapter 4, um, great stuff within the text. And, and here's the cool thing is, uh, and you don't get this in the English. You, you really only see this in the Hebrew, is you've got, um, you know, God, you know, asks him like, hey, why are you so upset? And Jonah says, ah, I'm, I'm, I knew you would do this. I know you'd be merciful, and, and now I'm upset, upset enough to die. And he's like, Really? So Jonah goes off to outside the city to, and he, to watch what might happen to the city. He's still holding out hope that God would judge them. Um, God has already shown mercy, and Jonah is still upset and like, well, maybe he'll change his mind. So God appoints a plant to grow over him to provide him shade, and Jonah's like, oh, shade. And then God appoints a, a worm to eat it, and the shade dies. And he's like, oh, kill me. Um, and he appoints a scorching east wind, and Jonah is just like languishing, and oh, God, I should just die right now. And God is making a point. He's like, I can do whatever I want. So these, you know, I, I made the plant grow. You didn't make the plant grow. You know, I, I'm the one who does all this stuff. And he says, so and you felt pity for the plant that you did nothing for. You know, and shouldn't I have pity on these people? Shouldn't I address these people who have turned to me in repentance? Shouldn't I have mercy on them? And then it ends really abruptly. And the cool thing well, a couple of cool things. The cool thing is, is it ends on God asking Jonah a question. Basically, should I not have mercy on them? Boom, it ends. Kind of putting the question on you, the reader, to answer that. Like, shouldn't God have mercy on those who turn to him? And you're supposed to answer, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But the cool thing that, that you don't get in the English, you only really get in the Hebrew, is um, you've got this back and forth between God and Jonah, God and Jonah, God and Jonah. And um, it begins with God speaking. It ends with God speaking. He gets the first and the last word in the text. But then, if you count up the number of specific Hebrew words that are spoken by each person, um, they speak the exact same number of words. So if Jonah says six words, God says six words. If Jonah says 20 words, God says 20 words. So in his back and forth with Jonah, God is responding to him like exactly word for word, giving him, you know, providing exactly the, the, the equal response to what he's saying. Um, so it's just kind of a cool thing about the text. And unfortunately, you know, it doesn't really translate into the English. You'd have to get into the Hebrew for that. But um, fascinating stuff. Great, great, um, great account of God's uh, mercy and grace. Uh, Jonah is unique among, among the prophets that, you know, he is sent to a pagan nation. He's not sent to the people of Israel or to Judah for this message, for this assignment. Um, prophets usually, you know, stick around Judah or Israel. But no, he sent sent away to uh, to Nineveh. Um, so yeah, great stuff. Uh, great picture of God's gracious mercy and his love. Um, his willingness to uh, turn away from judgment so that he would have mercy on those whom he loves. So uh, good, good stuff. Um, 
love Jonah. If you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments. I will happily address those. Um, <laughs> I've I've gone through Jonah many times. I've done several 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 Bible studies on him, and uh, it's a it's a really fun book. So enjoy today. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Thursday. Hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.